Now, the explicit commit command, explicit means you have to say do it, commit. You use the commit statement, okay? And that's simply all it is, is you simply commit. It commits all the changes since the last commit. An implicit commit is an automatic commit. Okay? It occurs when um, a DDL command is executed or user properly exits the system. Okay? Remember, the DDL is that data definition command. So if you're going to make a change to a data object, then that's an implicit commit. So all the data is saved. If you exit the system, all the data is automatically saved. Okay? The commit command permanently updates the tables. Okay? And this comment about allows other users to view the changes. Remember that when you're making a change or doing something with a table or records, then other users are prevented from making changes at the same time. Okay. So it's after the commit has been um, executed, then other users can see the changes. Okay. There's that rollback command. Um, if you simply use the rollback command, it will roll back to the um, last save point. Okay. And um, you can specify a save point. You can roll back to and then the name of a save point. Okay. Implicit uh, rollback is when the system restarts or after, you know, the system restarts after a crash. It's an implicit automatic, but the rollback statement is an explicit rollback. Page 160 is a graphic of an example of a transaction control. And here's a continuation of that ex transaction control. There's that rollback to 1. I'm going to go back a screen, back a slide. 1, O-N-E, was the name given to a save point. So this was an, an, Im excuse me, an explicit save point. The user said, I want to create a save point here. And then this update command was executed. Go to the next slide. And explicit rollback to the save point, to save point one. Okay, table locks. Table locks prevent users from changing the same data or objects. And I've already mentioned that when one user is um, manipulating or modifying some type of data, inserting record into a table, so on. The, the data is implicitly locked. Now there's two types of table locks. A shared table lock, uh, it prevents DML, data modification language, DML, which means the data changes or additions to the data. Um, and the shared lock prevents DML operations on a portion of a table, in other words, on certain records, the records that are currently being used. The shared lock allows the user, other users to view data in the table, just not the data that's being manipulated. An exclusive lock locks the table, preventing other exclusive or shared locks. So if there's an exclusive lock on the table, then other people cannot use that table. The table, excuse me, the lock table command with a shared lock, again, it locks a portion of the table. Implicit means automatic. So during an update or delete operation, the table, um, the shared lock, which means it only locks certain records, the records that are being um, modified or referenced, uh, they are locked automatically during an update or a delete. You can issue a lock table command 
with the share mode option to explicitly lock a table. And the locks are automatically released when a, when a commit occurs or a rollback co occurs. Again, it can be an implicit or an explicit commit or rollback. The lock table um, using an exclusive lock, um, again, automatically or implicitly during DDL operations. Remember, DDL are modifications, data definition language, so you're changing or creating uh, data de definition objects, data objects, you know, tables, sequences, views, etc. You can explicitly lock a table with ex exclusive mode using the lock table command. And again, the, the lock is released after the execution, in this case after the execution of a DDL operation or after the user exits the system. Again, um, something I should have mentioned as soon as we start talking about the locking the tables because in the real world, depending on the size of the company, it is very common to have multiple users accessing the database at the same time. Uh, an example at Delta College, when it's time to register for classes, there are several people that work in the registration office trying to update student you know, records, trying to get students into class. And especially now that we can do this online, um, you could have dozens of students trying to access the classes tables, you know, the, the class sessions tables at the same time. So that's why these uh, table locks are important. Okay, a select for update command. Okay. Again, as I just mentioned, when you have multiple users using the same table at the same time, or trying to use the same table at the same time, um, the, you can potentially um, create some, some confusion and, and maybe even possibly some loss of integrity of your data. So the select for update, what that does is it allows you to select several records from the table first. You select them, which creates a shared lock on those records. Then you make the updates to the records. Okay? And then once the, st once the statement has been executed, and the commit has occurred, so the data is saved, then the lock is released and people can see the, see the data and even make their changes to the data. Okay? So that select for update command um, is kind of a um, preemptive protecting of the data while you make the changes and then you release it for other people to use. Page 164 is that um, syntax diagram for a select for update command. And notice you select the column names from the table and where condition is optional for update clause at the bottom. Also remember some of you were um, were confused by the structure of some of these statements. Remember that the statements are not always read from top to bottom. Or they're not always processed from top to bottom by the database management system. Usually, the, if there is a from clause, that has to be executed first. Uh, some of the statements identify the table in the first clause. Just understand that table has to be identified first, and then you identify column names and then conditions and so on. All right. Once again, I'm not going to read through all of the summary bullet points. This is a time where you can pause the video if you'd like to read it, or again, you can access this PowerPoint from the Desire to Learn course content page. And one more summary page, and that's all we have for Chapter 5's audio lecture.